everyone. Good morning. Let's start the story club. Uh, the first paper we're going to talk about today is uh, from the uh, Thomas Shudok group's uh, Tom Shudok's uh, group's paper published this year. Uh, the title is a Neural Circuit for Memory Specificity and Generalization. And this is a picture of the first, uh, first author and this corresponding author. Uh, before we talk about the paper, I will briefly just uh, mention about the PTSD first. Uh, as you know, the PTSD is uh, symptoms that re-experiencing a past trauma and is triggered by a cue existing in a normal state of life. So, but usually uh, war veterans uh, are having uh, difficulties with uh, war uh, bad memories during the war after they come back to their house. And not even, not, not just uh, military uh, men, and even just normal people, <laughs> normal people also suffer from PTSD when they have a, a huge, a, a severe a trauma. So, there's a three types of symptoms commonly, and one is re-experiencing symptoms that involve uh, like a nightmare and frightening thoughts. They just keep thinking about the bad uh, trauma. And second one is avoidance symptoms. They just feeling uh, numb and they lose what they are what, what they were interested in and deficit in learning and memory. And uh, Third one is hyperarousal symptoms. So they are very upset all the time, and they have a higher anxiety, so they have difficulty in sleeping. Um, and the brain area related to PTSD is uh, in here, and uh, prefrontal cortex and amygdala and hippocampus are uh, mostly known, and the other areas like ACC and other cortex area and thalamus is also involved in the PTSD. Uh, as you can see here, uh, in the prefrontal cortex, they show a uh, decrease in the gray matter and, and uh, white matter density, decreased uh, gray, gray and white matter density, and also they show uh, Higher, sense, higher responsiveness in amygdala and hippocampus. So they, they show an increased anxiety and fear. <coughs> and so this, the reasons, uh, one of the reasons of PTSD is the uh, higher generalization. They show uh, overgeneralization. Uh, for example, um, when let, let's say I'm a deer and I'm on the field and I met a lion one day and I should run away from the lion and and I have a very uh, um, it's a trauma to me because I was almost killed and next day I met a tiger and I should feel they are similar to survive but if I think that they are just different and I don't feel they are uh, dangerous, may, I may be caught and die. So in this case, um, memory generalization is important. Uh, but if the balance is disrupted and if the generalization is too much increased, um, this kind of happens, these things happen. Um, let's say I'm uh, uh, a military man this time, and, and I came back home after my duty, and I made a fire to like in, on my on my backyard in my backyard, and but suddenly I just memorizing the fire in the uh, war field. 
So uh, in this case, this is a symptoms of PTSD. They just cannot discriminate the two different things, and they just generalize the normal life and the, their traumatic um, memory. So balance between this uh, specific and generalization is important for the normal life. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, hippocampus is very uh, famous, uh, very uh, involved in, heavily involved in uh, memory generalization. As you know, the uh, um, <coughs> and hippocampus they have a pattern. <coughs> they are very involved in uh, pattern separation and pattern discrimination, as you know. And so I just show. Uh, Preferred to cortex pa uh, related papers. Uh, in this paper is published last year from the Schudoff lab, and they used uh, similar methods, uh, similar method with uh, today's paper. They also they used a uh, pattern of toxin to block the activation of neuron to block the certain area, and. In this paper, in the, they, they use uh, synaptotegamine knockdown to block the synchronous synaptic transmission, which is uh, the synaptotegamine one is a calcium sensor in the synapse, and they sense the calcium and they release the neurotransmitter. But in this case, they are knockdown, so the synchronous synaptic transmission is blocked. In this group. So, by just ex, uh, isolated action potential, they don't show a current, right? but when they give a, a trains of action potential, they show a current because their uh, synchronous is uh, disrupted. And using this Using this uh, technique, they used uh, they uh, they tested uh, in the hippocampus, and they did uh, contextual fear tests and also the different uh, the generalization test and tone test, as we will see in our uh, today's paper. And, uh, in, uh, interestingly, uh, in the hippocampus, even though they are, they block the firing with a tetanus toxin, they could memorize the fear, uh, fear contextual memory, yeah. and uh, and uh, in the prefrontal cortex. It's very well known that the cortex, prefrontal cortex is uh, important in the remote memory. As, as we thought, this result shows that uh, this uh, synaptotegmin group and tetanus toxin group both show uh, decreased uh, freezing levels, which means um, they are. Uh, Which, which means uh, their uh, remote memory is uh, blocked. Uh, but the interesting thing is that in the prefrontal cortex, they found this tetanus toxin group and synaptotegmin group both showed uh, over generalization. Over generalization. Uh, so in, within this paper, they mentioned that prefrontal cortex also uh, involved in the memory generalization.
So, in this scheme, they, their uh, normal signal, just isolated action potential, cannot transmit, transfer the signals. Only the high frequency strings can transfer the signal in this case. So, and the, as you can see in the title, they show uh, They just block the. They want to see the fast. What is the component of the a result of the fast synchronous? What is the role of fast synchronous synaptic transmission? So, so that's the whole trying to just to work well against the house. Uh, there, you mean this one? Oh yeah, there. Yeah, I, yeah. I think they just. They don't think they are too much different. And, and this paper is about uh, uh, anatomical connection between uh, nucleus, reunions, and prefrontal cortex and hippocampus. We all know that uh, hippocampus is involved in generalization and prefrontal cortex is involved in generalization. And we want to know the, where is the target after prefrontal cortex and so that the area that uh, regulates the hippocampus. And there's a paper saying that uh, nucleus re reunions are the anatomical linker between hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. They use a tracer, anterograde <coughs> tracer and a retrograde tracer. They injected this tracer to both sides, one, one in the prefrontal cortex and one in the uh, hippocampus. And they, they found that in the nucleus reunions, the signal was combined. So, so they found that uh, this is a critical uh, link between the two areas. How is the order of this? Is it any signals come from different in different prefrontal cortex hippocampus or is there any retrograde signal retrograde uh, synapses to from hippocampus to the tissue? Yeah, there is a connection between uh, there's a the both way they have uh, so uh, yeah this that paper gave a clue that the nucleus reunions could be the candidate <coughs> so this group wanted to know the real function and their um, real role in the generalization of uh, I feel member generalization in uh, nucleus reunions as a linker between prefrontal cortex and hippocampus. Uh, this is a method they used. They used a synaptotag uh, AAB construct, which has uh, M cherry and uh, and the EJPP synaptograbing tube. So. This synaptograbin to EJPP goes to synapse, synaptic terminal, so they can mark uh, synaptic terminal point. And M cherry is expressed in whole body, so they are staining the, that neuron, which is uh, uh, which is expressing the virus. And they also use a uh, uh, and yeah with this. Construct, they, you will see this again, but let's, uh, let me introduce this uh, here first. Uh, they injected a virus to medial prefrontal cortex and they wanted to see where the virus, where the, this neuron project. And they, uh, using this technique, they found that nucleus reunions and 
other those are part of dullness and also make your prefrontal cortex and other area is connected and have, are projected. And other technique they used is a um, uh, WGA3, which is a retrograde uh, molecule, and they put a Cree to WGA. So when they express this construct, they are expressed and they go to a presynaptic uh, neurons and express if the presynaptic neuron has this uh, double flexed uh, construct, they can express this construct in the presynaptic set. as one gene, but during the translation, during the two-a site, the, the um, elongation stops there and initiates again, so they can make the EGFT and set up from, from one gene, two proteins from one gene. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, okay. So, They just they express EGFP and tet tetanus toxin. That's a three. Yeah, it's not a fusion. Okay. I thought it's fusion. Oh, okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, okay. So in, in with this uh, uh, with this method, they injected AB a WGA three AAB to nucleus uh, reunions uh, and they. They found that the neuron projecting from the prefrontal cortex to this nucleus reunions, and they could uh, block the activation of this neuron. And other behavior, they are they use a behavior uh, test to see the to test uh, memory generalization. And their scheme is this. Uh, they did the training and they gave a tone for 30 seconds. And at the end of the tone, they gave a shot for two seconds. And then uh, next day, they put into the same cage to check the context test for five minutes. And they checked the freezing uh, levels. So they remember the context. The next day, they they are put it in the different case as a different uh, uh, environment. Uh, they turn off the ventilation fan and they use a vanilla odor instead of alcohol, and they put a stripe in the wall and they change the the roof uh, and roof and the. They change <laughs> floor, yeah. and, and in the altered, con uh, altered context, they recorded their freezing level for five minutes, and after five minutes, they gave a one minute of tone to check to test the tone test, to, uh, acute fear conditioning test, and they in the night mice they. They, they checked that uh, in the art of the context, uh, normally they show uh, less bridging, which means they can discriminate um, the context. So this is the discrimination index they used to, to measure how they generalize, generalize the memory. Uh, the bridging level in the context, uh, original context and uh, the freezing level in the outer context uh, has a you know, difference. 
So this level minus this and divide by the sum of these two freezing levels. This is used in the other figures. Um, they, they use uh, Euroligand to knock down uh, to block the garbage. Garbage signal to overactivate the uh, nucleus reunion neuron. You, know, you will see that in the later part. And uh, this neuroligand 2 is a postsynaptic uh, cell, this molecule in the, in the neuron, and they make a garbage, they make a complex with a uh, Ga uh, GABA receptor and glycine receptor. So when they are knocked down, they show a decrease in frequency and amplitude of IPSC. They, uh, uh, they show a decreased uh, inhibitory occurrence when they are knocked down. And, and the last part, they use uh, optogenetic stimulation to um, to manipulate the firing of nucleus reunions neuron, and they used uh, channel IEF channel. Um, in this graph, they say uh, this channel IEF is better than channel ETA. It's called, it is called chip. Chip? Oh, chip. Okay. Chip. Is, is it chip? Chip is better than ETA? Huh? Channel ETA. Channel ETA. Chita, chita. This, this one is called chita, chita. Chita. Okay. So they show a higher, a larger amplitude of current than the chita. And they show a high they can work uh, in a high frequency uh, condition and repetitively and Continuous uh, illumination can work with this channel. And so they use uh, this channel uh, uh, chip, uh, the deriv derivative of channel rotation too. So uh, let's go to the result part. Uh, as I showed you before, uh, they did. Um, Synaptic tagging mapping. So they injected a virus to prefrontal cortex and they wanted to see where is the, this neuron project to. And they found that uh, nucleus reunions and thalamus and, uh, and the prefrontal cortex itself and other striatum areas. So in the Nucleus unions and middle dorsal thalamus, they injected a CTB, uh, which is a retrograde tracer, and they are labeled with other uh, fluorescent tag. So they wanted to see that uh, this neuron in the prefrontal cortex project to a different area and from the one neuron, or different neurons project to one specific areas. And using this experiment, they found that there's no, uh, not much uh, varied uh, signal, which means uh, each area suggests they project to one part <coughs> from the middle prefrontal cortex. Uh, after that, they wanted to block the activation of uh, prefrontal cortex, which project to specifically project to uh, media and uh, nucleus reunions uh, using this uh, WGA Cree and Lex P system, they specifically uh, in activate the transmit to release uh, 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 signal transduction uh, from the media prefrontal cortex neuron, which project to uh, nucleus reunions. 
and they uh, did a behavior experiment with this mice. And specifically in the uh, in the in the training con in the training uh, just normal fear conditioning, they didn't show any difference. But in the out of the context, which check uh, their uh, memory generalization, there uh, in the nucleus reunions group only showed uh, higher uh, freezing levels, which means they are over generalized. And this uh, prefrontal cortex group is a positive control to see if this uh, system works. So, as you can see in the discrimination index, uh, this uh, group which uh, injected, uh, which projecting to the prefrontal cortex to uh, nucleus reunions neuron, when they are blocked, the memory uh, uh, generalization is disrupted. Uh, they they over generalize the memory. So so we know that with your prefrontal cortex to nucleus reunions is involved in uh, memory generalization. So. Next question was that uh, if what if the nucleus reunions neuron have um, um, they what if their uh, firing has changed? Uh, what is the uh, result of the phenotype when their uh, firing of nucleus reunions has changed? So they injected a uh, tetanus toxin and uh, neuroligin 2 uh, shRNA to this uh, nucleus reunions and one the <coughs> tetanus toxin is to block the firing of nucleus reunions and the, uh, and the neuroligin 2 knockdown is to inhibit the garbage uh to the, this nucleus reunions so this uh, overactivate the nucleus reunions uh, neuron. Mm. They checked uh, this neuroligin two knockdown efficiency, and in the neuroligin two knockdown group, they showed a uh, decreased mini IPSC, which means they showed a uh, decreased uh, inhibitory synaptic currents and. Here. And with this mice, they train the after virus injection. After two weeks, they train the fear conditioning, and then they test the context. And then next day, they give a out of the context and tone test. Uh, same with other uh, tests, there is no difference in the training context. And in the altered context, the tetanus toxin group, which blocked the firing of neuro, uh, nucleus reunions neuron, showed a higher freezing level. And the neuroligin 2 knockdown group showed a decreased freezing level in the different context. So, you can see um, this when they are blocked, they overgeneralize it, and if they are more activated, they show uh, increased uh, specificity. And they didn't show um, in the any difference in the tone test. And they wanted to confirm that what if they are involved in the in the, during the retrieval, not in the acquisition part. So they did a similar experiment, but they injected a virus after training. Uh, in this experiment, they didn't show any difference 
between groups, among group groups. So we can say during the acquisition, the nucleus reunions uh, was involved in the hemorrhaging organization. And they confirmed uh, the activation of uh, Activation of C1 in the hippocampus with C4 staining. They they activated a nucleus reunions, but they wanted to see whether their their target in the hippocampus is actually uh, activated or uh, or uh, decreased in firing. So they checked. The C4 level and in the neural ligand knockdown group, they showed uh, increased uh, C4 level. And in the tetanus toxin group, they uh, showed uh, less uh, C4 level. As you can see here, in the CA1, they showed a uh, higher C, uh, C4 level. In Neural ligand 2 knockdown group and decreased C force level in the tetanus toxin group. And, and other than the C1, uh, ACC also showed a similar effect. So the next question was to uh, stimulating. Uh, with the nucleus reunions neuron with a different firing pattern. Uh, they uh, use uh, two different stimulating pattern. One is forehead tonic stimulation and the other one is uh, phage stimulation pattern. Um, during, the, uh, during the training part, they, they stimulate with uh, optogenetic in the nucleus reunion neuron and they showed that in the phasic firing uh, group showed uh, uh, over generalized over generalized uh, phenotype and in the tonic firing group showed a uh, decrease in phrasing levels so they can discriminate the context more well, and they, they checked the tone test too, and there was uh, no difference. So, as a result, uh, this two different optogenetic stimulation could induce an uh, opposite effect. Uh, one could uh, increase the generalization, and one, dec one could decrease the memory generalization. So in this paper, they show that uh, medial prefrontal cortex of directly project to nucleus reunions, and this also project to uh, hippocampus and uh, VTA and interior cortex. And when they uh, manipulated the firing of nucleus reunions neuron. Uh, they could see the two different phenotypes of behavior with these two different uh, stimulation protocol. So, so in this paper, they want to see they want they show that this uh, closed circuit in medial frontal cortex and nucleus reunions and hippocampus. They are involved in uh, memory generalization. Um, they uh, say that this is uh, in the last part of the paper. They say. Uh, the feature has a uh, more prominence 
feature, they are easily involved in the memory. But, uh, and uh, if the feature has low pro prominence, they are uh, not easy to be involved in the memory. But, and, uh, well, that uh, they just said that uh, nuclear reunion's firing pattern could change the phenotype of memory, general memory generalization. But uh, they didn't mention about uh, the role of entranal cortex and the VTA. And here, uh, we want to talk about this here. Um, when they are uh, uh, in the low activity level, just nu this nucleus reunions activate the C1, and just certain part of the stimulation just yeah, incorporated in the C1 neuron. Um, so the if the um, certain feature has low prominence, then they are very hard to be involved in the memory. But when the nucleus reunions is activated, and they activate the anthorhinal cortex and VTA, they, uh, they may uh, transmit the uh, dopamine and anthorhinal cortex uh, fire here. So at the same time, with a uh, with the nucleus reunions, SNAPS. So cooperatively, cooperat uh, they show a cooperativity between this nucleus reunion C1 SNAPS and the uh, anthorhinal cortex C1 SNAPS. So they can uh, reduce the threshold for the synaptic plasticity in the SNAPS. And also VTA can work for this uh, synaptic plasticity. And so, uh, as I said, uh, with a less prominent feature, it can be uh, incorporated into a memory with uh, this kind of uh, synaptic plastic, this kind of uh, other parts uh, help.
Basic, basic consumption of behavior, behavior experiment is uh, that <coughs> their behavior, <coughs> their behavior is the same as their mental representation. Uh, because we cannot talk, we cannot talk, talk with mouth. We cannot ask that. Do you think this, this is contact the same as their alter? We cannot ask that. So we, we, we see the, their behavior and we see. They say uh, there is no inhibitory neuron in the nucleus, only an excitatory neuron. So that's why they use uh, uh, neural ligand 2 knockdown, essentially. And they say only uh, afferent synapses silence, not different neuron, is not silent. Because they don't have. Intrinsic inhibitory neurons in the area. Any other questions? Campus also projecting to middle prefrontal cortex. Yeah. They say here uh, all three areas are yeah, uh, uh, middle prefrontal cortex. Yeah. So the, I think the hippocampus, by this uh, effect on the change of the nucleus of the unions, the hippocampus can affect the anterior cingulate cortex and they could give a change. Yeah. Generalization test, and they can show any difference in the acute pure generalization test. Thank you. 
check. Oh, they they didn't check the um, the the neuron that projecting to C one is um, specifically uh, involved in this, uh, and and as as they use in different area, they could use a uh, retrograde uh, uh, Cree and PTSD. See their phenotypes when they was a human case. Yeah, the animal case. Yeah. I didn't check that, but they also affect those areas but I didn't know the the shrinking. said anymore I thought I was thinking about dog <laughs> in case of rats or mice uh, we, 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 we just don't, I think we don't use use a word PTSD and just they we, we say uh, they can discriminate Two different shoes. Uh, I mean, yeah, so lots of this kind of study mm -hmm. they mentioned about curing PTSD in yes. the discussion part. So yes. Yes. But it doesn't sound any of them are actually showing lots of symptoms of PTSD in the study. Protocortex was also connected during the was in the paper they were involved in this as you said. So I think it, it's not possible to can be possible. <coughs> yeah, 
great locusts. And thank you for 